Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today we are going to talk about wounds and healing in Mage Knight. This is a topic that I think is confusing for a lot of new players, but I promise we're going to get through it and it's not going to seem bad at all by the end of this video. Okay, maybe I can't promise that, but I'll do my best. So to help us today, we're going to have Arethea. She has put on her battle panties for us, and she's going to show us how to take wounds and to heal them in this game. So we're going to start with Arethea, and we're going to demonstrate how she would take wounds as a mage knight, and then I'm going to show you some units, and we're going to talk about assigning damage to them and how that part works. So here's Arethea's deck, and these are the wound cards, which have the same back, and you're going to be learning all about why that is. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna go through combat or blocking because I've already done a separate video for that. This video is strictly about getting beat up and looking at the consequences of that. All right, so let's just start with a sample battle where Erythea does not block and she takes some damage. If you recall from my previous video about combat, these guys have swiftness, which means that she would need to generate six block anyway in order to block it. And I've made sure that Erythea has a terrible hand for this. It's all move. And I've decided for the purposes of this example, she's in levels one to two, which means that she has a hand limit of five, which you can see here, but she also has an armor of two. And we're gonna learn all about what it's like to have an armor of two in just a moment. So we had the ranged combat phase and nothing happened because we didn't have any ranged attack. Now we're in the block phase. Erythea has five cards and none of them block. There's no way she's blocking this. The damage is going to go through. So then stage three of combat before we get to attack is what's called the assign damage phase. And that's the phase that we're gonna talk about right now. So in Mage Knight, both attacking and blocking are all or nothing. You need to generate enough attack to take your enemy out or it's not worth attacking at all because you can't knock off a couple points and try again later. You have to get it all in one go. The same thing goes for blocking. So even if I had some block, if you don't completely block and attack, the entire amount of the damage will go through. So in this case, Erethea is going to take three damage. In Mage Knight, that does not mean she takes three wound cards. There's a different way to calculate damage that is totally fine once you get used to it, but at first it can be a little confusing. So we're gonna do a couple of examples to lower my risk of leaving y'all confused. So three damage is going through. Erethea has two armor. The other not intuitive thing about Mage Knight combat is that having armor does not mean that a hit does not go through. Hits only can be blocked by blocking. Erethea's armor is used to calculate damage, but it is not used to protect her. Instead, what's going to happen is that we are gonna subtract her armor value from the amount of damage that she takes until the total is equal to or less than zero. So three damage went through, she has two armor. Three minus two is one. So that was Erethea's first wound that she'll take into her hand. But we still have one left that is greater than zero. One minus two is negative one. Erethea will take one more damage into her hand. And now we are under zero, so the damage will stop. So damage is determined by subtracting your armor value from the amount of damage you took again and again until you reach zero. The shorthand way to do it is to divide by two and round up. Let's say that Erethea was not in fact at level one or two. Let's say that she's at level three and we'll put these wounds back. Now, if Erethea takes three damage, she has three armor. Three minus three is zero. So she'll take one wound, but now our total is zero. So she won't take any more. Pretty convenient, right? And the exact same thing would happen if Erethea was at level nine and somehow failed to block this attack. So if she doesn't block, she's still gonna take a hit, but three minus four is negative one. Erethea will take one single wound and then the damage will be over. Let's do an example with a different enemy and I'll just pick a random level token so that we can check the math one more time. Oh no, this time Erethea managed to provoke an orc summoner. Now he's gonna summon an enemy to hit us and we don't have any block. All right, so the orc is gonna get this worm. I don't remember what the actual name is, but it looks like a gross worm to me. So that's what we're going with. So this worm can do six damage. And oh no, I can't block it. So six damage is going to go through for Erethea. Let's say that Erethea is at level three when this happens. That means that her armor value is also three. So when six damage will go through, six minus three is three. 
she'll take one wound in her hand for that. So six minus three was three, and then three minus three, because that was the total left, right, is going to be zero. So she takes one more wound, but then because the total is zero, she doesn't take any more wounds. The shorter explanation of that is six divided by three is two. Now let's do a demo with an odd number just to drive the point home. This time she would have been hit for five. Five minus three is two. So we're still above zero, she's gonna take one wound. And then two minus three is negative one, she's gonna take another wound, but now we stop because we're below zero. Or you can divide and round up. Five divided by three is about 1.67, which rounds up to two, you take two wounds. The same concept is going to roughly apply when you choose to assign damage to a unit. Let's say that we have our Utum Guardsmen here to help us out. They have an armor of five, and this thing does damage of five. So what you could choose to do is you can, you can select your Utum Guardsmen to absorb the hit for you, and their armor would matter in the calculation of that damage. So if five damage goes through, and they have five armor, five minus five is zero. These guys are gonna take one hit, and then they have completed the assigned damage phase for you, and you're all done. So a unit with good armor can definitely get you out of a pinch. However, you cannot use this unit again, whether it's ready or not, until it is healed. So when you damage units, have a plan to either disband them, which you can totally do, you can just be like, bye, and replace them with another unit, or to heal them, and we'll be talking about that later in this video. Also, in case you didn't notice from the fact that I assigned damage, units get wounded just like you, no matter how much of the damage their armor actually covers. Because damage is prevented by block, not by armor. Let's bring our worm friend back in to talk about what happens when your unit's armor doesn't absorb the entire hit. In this case, this worm is hitting for six, and our Utum Garzman can absorb five of that. So six minus five is one. These guys are wounded, but you're still gonna have to put that one damage somewhere. So let's say that we had a level one Erythea with this unit, the unit took five of the damage with its armor. So it gets hurt and there's one left over because six minus five is one. Erethi will take that one, she'll take a wound card, and then one minus two is negative one. So the attack ends. There's one other very cool exception I wanna show you before we move on. Typically a unit can only be wounded one time. You cannot wound it twice. However, enemies with resistances in some cases can escape from combat without being wounded at all. Let's say that instead of the guardsmen, Erethea had these guardian golems. If you look next to their armor, they have a symbol that looks familiar if you've watched my combat video. That is the symbol that means physical resistance. And this worm is coming at us with a physical attack. So what that's gonna be in practical terms is that these guardian golems can take two hits from a physical attack before they are injured. So six minus three is three. That first hit doesn't do any damage to them at all. It just kind of goes nowhere. Then the remaining three, minus three is zero. Because it's that second hit, the guardian golems take a wound. However, all of the damage from this hit is also now absorbed. So you don't have to share any of it with other units or with Erethea. These guys manage to take it all. So what that can mean in certain situations is that your units don't take a wound even if they absorb damage, which is really cool. So this guy hits for three physical attack these guys have three armor and physical resistance. So three minus three is zero, nothing happens, and poof, we're at zero. The attack will stop, and the guardian golems don't take any wounds at all. It is very convenient to pick up units that have some resistances for this exact reason. It helps a lot when you are assigning damage. So what does happen to wounds after you take them? And then how do you get rid of them? Well, wounds are exceptionally irritating because what they typically do is hang out in your hand and block the amount of cards that you can draw. Let's say that Erythea spent some cards last turn, had two left, and has two wounds. Because of these two wounds, she has four cards in her hand and a hand limit of five. So she only gets to draw one more card for her next turn because the wounds are clogging up her hand. If you need to take big turns or get a lot of movement or influence or attack or block points, the wounds are really gonna get in your way. And during a round, you don't get to discard them. They just hang out in your hand unless you have a specific effect that permits you to discard a card. So if you get wounded early in a round, you and your wounds are gonna hang out for a while. However, there are some situations where wounds go into your discard pile and out of your hand. One of those is if you rest. Now, generally it absolutely stinks to have to rest during Mage Knight because it is a wasted turn. On a turn when you rest, you cannot move, you cannot interact with your locations, 
you are permitted to heal, which I suppose is good because you don't want to have to rest too many times in this game. There are two kinds of rest. One is called standard rest, and you can do this at any time where you have wounds in your hand, but also at least one non-wound card. So for demonstration's sake, let's say that I have four wounds and determination. I am currently determined to get these wound cards out of my hand, so I can take a standard rest. What I will do is I will discard determination, my non-wound card, in order to put all of these other cards, these wound cards, into my discard as well. That's gonna clear out my hand so that I can draw up to my normal hand limit and hopefully get something useful. However, it will come back and kick you in the butt later because things that go into your discard pile can, you guessed it, be drawn again. So if you have a whole bunch of wounds sitting in your discard pile, you will draw them again and you will have to deal with them. Hopefully not all at once. But who's worried about the future? When you take a standard rest, you get rid of one of your non-wound cards and then discard as many wound cards as you want and they all go to your discard pile. The other kind of rest is something truly horrible called slow recovery. That's what happens if you somehow have only wound cards in your hand and you can't even discard one regular card. If that happens, you can't just toss all of these. You have to do a slow recovery. And what that means is that you get to do nothing on your turn and just discard one of the wound cards to your discard pile. If you've gotten underneath your hand limit and then you draw a non-wound card from your deck, you're able to recover that next turn. So if I draw and I get Swiftness, I can discard Swiftness, recover, and at least get all these to my discard pile. However, if something truly horrible has happened, so here I'm holding six wound cards, so I must have just come off of a pretty bad combat. Erythea's hand limit is five, so I would have to slow recover and discard one wound, do nothing that turn, and then slow recover and discard another card and waste another turn and then hope that I draw a non-wound so I can at least do a normal rest and end the slow hell of slow recovery. So there's one other special way to get wounds that I want to talk about before we talk about healing, and that is the infamous, the dreaded knockout. Let's say that Erythea spent a couple of cards to move and then just decided to see what was in a monster den where you draw a brown token. Sometimes on those turns, you draw a random token and you don't really know what's in there. So Erythea is chilling with these three cards, but she's made a critical miscalculation because what just showed up is a Minotaur. Minotaurs are one of the scariest enemies in the game if you draw them and you're not ready. Oh no. So Minotaurs have what's called the Brutal ability, which you might remember if you watched my combat video. What that means is that if I fail to block the Minotaur's attack, it doesn't go through as five, it, go through, it goes through as ten. So even though I can probably generate five attack from this hand, it's not going to matter because Erythea is going to get knocked out. So with these cards, so I, let's say I don't have a blue mana, so I only have the block two and then maybe I can do these sideways, I could, still couldn't get past block four. And what that would mean is this Minotaur's attack of five is gonna go through, and because it's brutal, it's gonna go through as 10. And that's gonna lead to a knockout. So a knockout is what happens if the number of wound cards that you add to your hand during combat meets or exceeds your hand limit. So Erythea's hand limit is five cards. And 10 damage going through, 10 divided by two is Five. So we know that Erythea is going to take five wounds from this hit. That is the same as her hand limit. So not only are these going to get added to her hand, but she's going to experience what's called knockout. And that means that she doesn't even get to attack back. When you are knocked out, you immediately have to discard all non-wound cards from your hand. So when you get knocked out, these are just gone and you're stuck with these wounds. If I had units, they could continue to fight, and I can use skills that I might have had to happen to pick up along the way. But basically, a knockout would kill my ability to finish the combat well from the cards that were in my hand, in addition to adding a whole bunch of nasty wounds to my hand. And so that would basically guarantee that I'd have to take a slow recovery on the following turn. So knockout totally stinks, because if it happens to you, not only do you get hit for a whole bunch, but you don't get to hit back. So even if you were able to generate some pretty good attack, it's totally wasted. The combat is over, you lost. The other thing to note about knockout is that it doesn't have to come from just one hit from an enemy. Wounds that you picked up from other 
cards. For example, some of your cards will allow you to take a wound in order to get a special effect. Those also count towards knockout. If you acquire your hand limit in wounds in any manner during combat, you're knocked out. If you just have a couple of wounds in your hand and you're still getting some card draw, typically what I'll do, because I hate missing a turn to rest, is I'll just limp through. And then at the end of the round, when you reshuffle your deck and get yourself a fresh hand of cards, any wound cards that are still just in your hand get shuffled into your discard pile as well. So wounds stay in your hand until you either rest or until you reach the end of a round and everything in your hand gets shuffled into your deck anyway. So I'm sure you can see how wounds can be a bit irritating in a game of Mage Knight, which leads to the next natural question. How do you get rid of those things? Well, now I'm going to show you. The most common way to get rid of wounds just from your hand is to draw Tranquility. It's your base healing card. And if you've picked up other cards with healing abilities, you can use those as well. Tranquility is your standard, so you can either just play it to heal one or draw a card. If you have a green mana, you can do it to heal two. Healing is something that is done from your hand. So all those wounds that are hanging out in your discard pile, just hang out there. You have to draw something into your hand in order to spend healing points to deal with it. So in this case, if I don't have any green mana or any green mana that I want to spend, I can play this card to heal one and just put this back on the wound pile. It does not go to my discard. It does not go back into my hand in any way. It goes on the wound pile and it's gone. If I have a green mana and can heal for two, then I can take both wounds out. And then I'm all clear and able to drop to my normal hand size with cards I actually want for the next turn. So while you can use healing points from cards in your hand to heal, you also have the option of using your influence points to purchase healing at various locations on the map. So if you go to a monastery, then you are able to buy one point of healing for two influence points here. So you can also go spend your influence at a location in order to get some of those wound cards out of your hand. You can also heal at a village, but the price is not as good. Here, you can get one point of healing for three influence. So if you're gonna spend influence to heal, a monastery is better. You can use healing points to heal yourself by removing wound cards from your hand, or you can pay them to remove damage from your units. Let's say that our friends, the guardian golems, have been wounded. They're basically useless to us until we heal them. So when you heal a unit, you need to purchase the number of healing points that is equivalent to the level of that unit. So you're gonna spend one, two, or three healing points to heal your unit. In this case, we're gonna to need to get two points of healing to take this one wound off of my golems. But then once I've done that, they are ready to rock again. They will maintain the state of readiness or exhaustion that they had before they were wounded, and that will just reset the same way as always at the end of a round. So there is a special case I wanna talk about that you might have thought would come up again if you watched my combat video, and that's the special effect of poison. Poison is a nasty thing. It doesn't just wound you in the moment. It has long running effects that bother you later as well. To reflect this, if Erythea were to take a wound from an enemy with the poison ability, she would not only add a wound card to her hand, but she would add one to her discard pile as well. And you do this for every wound that you take. So if Erythea were to absorb all three of this damage from these hags, she would take one wound to her hand and one to her discard pile. Then three minus two is one. So she would take another wound to her hand and another wound to her discard pile, which would come back to haunt us later. Poison also has the unique ability of damaging a unit twice. These guardian golems would actually be okay because with poison, you take an extra rune for every wound you take. However, this hag only hits for three and these guys have physical resistance. So she would hit for three, three minus three is zero. They took the first hit without getting wounded at all. And then if she did more damage than this, they would then get poisoned. But in this case, they have escaped. So let's bring in a friend of theirs to talk about what would happen next. Let's bring back our Utsum Guardsmen. So the Utsum Guardsmen do not have physical resistance, and that means that they are gonna get wounded even though their armor value is bigger than the damage that they would absorb. So if these hags hit them, three minus five is negative two, her attack is over after that, but these guys are wounded not once because of the wound that they normally would take, but twice because of the normal wound, and then again, because of the poison. And one interesting consequence of that is that you also have to pay double to heal them. So if you decide that you're going to heal your units, either with healing points from your hand or by paying influence points in a monastery or village, you have to pay two to get rid of one wound and then two to get rid of the other because you pay by the level of the unit. So poison can continue to irritate you well after the combat is actually over. 
There's one other place where you can get rid of wounds, but technically you are not healing yourself when you were there. It is considered something different from healing. So the other way to get rid of wounds in your hand or in your discard pile, which is a special thing, is the magical glade. So healing essence. If you end your turn on a magical glade, you can throw away one wound card from your hand or your discard pile. This is not the same as healing and the effect cannot be combined with other healing effects. The Magical Glade is only for removing wounds from your hand or from your discard. Units cannot be healed at a Magical Glade because technically what's happening there is not healing. So now you know how healing points are spent, either by using your cards or by purchasing healing points at monasteries and villages. The only other thing to note is that you are allowed to heal at any time on your turn, even when you're resting, as long as you are not trying to heal in the middle of combat. So no, you are not able to just get rid of damage right in the middle of a fight. You have to wait until after it's over. So let's thank our helper Erethea for her lovely demonstration of how to get hit in the face in Mage Knight. I hope this teaching video was helpful. If it was, please do like and subscribe and feel free to leave questions in the comments. If you have a very technical question based on a specific gameplay situation, I actually recommend that you take a picture and post it in the Mage Knight board game Facebook group because those people are extremely useful. Have fun playing Mage Knight and happy gaming. Mm -hmm.